Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic, and this is how Annie Are You OK My Beetleweight did at AVC. Now, a little bit of a forewarning for some of you, this is not a happy video, this is not a long video. Uh, take from that what you will. Um, but I just, I thought I needed to warn you guys up uh, front. So, before we even get to AVC, I need to talk about this. This here is how Annie Are You OK got shipped to America. This box here is what happened. I put Annie, pulled Annie apart to spray paint Annie and give it a new paint job and I ran out of time because I was building very very obvious. And so Annie got shipped in a box and inside my suitcase and everything but like this in a box just in complete disarray which meant that when I got to the States I had to completely rebuild Annie from a box of parts essentially and that really, really did not go very well. When I got there on the first day or a couple of days before the actual competition started, I pulled my suitcase open and found that um, the TSA, while I'd been traveling through America, had pulled my whole suitcase apart and just jammed things back in to the suitcase without taking any care about where there was supposed to be foam and what was supposed to be wrapped around what. And this box got jammed in underneath the chassis of very, very obvious, my 13 kilo combat robot. And it seemed to have taken a bit of damage because when I finally opened this box up and tried to get Annie, are you okay moving? I found a lot of things wrong. First and foremost, the battery that I had, which wasn't actually in this box that it was carried with me while I was flying over, suddenly decided that one of its cells was dead, which meant I was down the only battery that I had for Annie, are you okay? Inside this box, the two brushed speed controllers that I was using for drive were both dead, just straight up dead, could not find a way to get those working once I actually got them back out of this box. They went into this box working, they came out of this box not working. And then finally, on top of all of that, because that wasn't enough apparently, I also had an issue where one of the drive motors, the gearbox in one of the drive motors seized. Now I think this has just taken a bit of a bump in shipping and it just seized, it just failed completely and totally. So of course that meant that I was in Colorado the couple of days before and just panicking because I could not get Annie back together with all of the pieces that I had and there was a lot of stuff that I just didn't know where it was gonna come from or what was gonna happen. And here I owe a huge thanks to the people around me in the pits, mostly Phil from Team Cerberus who sat next to me. He lent me uh, the battery and also a motor that he had spare. And then I also got some speed controllers as well. And without any of these things, Annie Are You Okay would not have competed at all for this event. It just, it would not have competed. So on the Friday while I was kind of testing uh, very, very obvious, my 13 kilo robot and being very happy with its performance. I was also madly scrambling to get Annie back together with very borrowed parts, a lot of very borrowed parts from people. Thankfully, very close to the end of Friday, which is the day before competitions, I did manage to get Annie up and running and put Annie in the test box and spin Annie up, which looked a little bit like this. And that, that was a beautiful moment for me. It, it was one of those things that was, it, it's indescribable because the amount of work that had gone into that at that point was incredible. I honestly did not think that Annie was going to go from the cardboard box into actually fighting. And to be perfectly honest, Annie wasn't the reason I was there. The reason I was there was the 13 kilo fights. Annie just happened to be an extra set of fights that I could possibly do. Okay, so having said all of that, Annie is now up and running. On the first day, my very first fight is against Rum Ham. Now, if you don't know Rum Ham, Rum Ham actually has an interesting lineage, or Annie has an interesting lineage of Rum Ham. So Rum Ham was the original, or undercutter, 
that then inspired crippling depression. And crippling depression is the undercutter that inspired Annie White, Are You Okay? So between the three robots, there are two different weight classes and a whole set of links, but then Annie, its first fight in America, was fighting Romham. Essentially, it's like grandfather inspiration, I guess. Uh, and Romham is a serious piece of kit. It is not uncommon for Romham to be at an event and builders to talk about being Romhammed, which is fighting Romham and just getting blown to pieces. I thought that I was in with a pretty good chance. I'd had the brand new steel base plate put in that we did in the upgrades video just a little while ago, and the weapon was running a lot better than it ever run before. I didn't check which way his weapon motor was running. I didn't really check which way my weapon was spinning, and I thought, I'm just gonna throw this into the arena, and we're gonna go for it. So let's take a look at that. So yeah, I got Romhammed. That was a thing that happened. I got completely mangled by Romham. This, that hit did a huge amount of damage. The actual base plate, the steel base plate that I was using that held the actual uh, weapon mount through it, warped beyond comparison. It just like all over the shop. So I then had to sit down and try and get that back together. However, I was also fighting very, very obvious at the time and had just lost the weapon, uh, sorry, the power link in very, very obvious. So I got very, very obvious back up and running first and didn't really think about Annie too much until I got a tap on the shoulder saying, you're up next, you're up next with Annie. And I was like, Annie's in pieces. It's not working. Like the whole bottom frame is warped. I need time, give me time. So I then had to do a mad rush, and I was really, really lucky in this case. While I was packing this box, I absentmindedly threw the old Lexan base plate into this box, and I am so glad that I did. If I had not done that, Annie would not have got a second fight, just at all, because that base plate was so warped, there was nothing I was going to be able to do to get it flat enough to actually run the weapon against. So... I'm really, really glad that this box just happened, happened to have that last little piece of Lexan in there that I needed, which meant though that I had a huge rush job, because to change the base plate you basically need to pull Annie completely to pieces and rebuild her from nothing again. So they kept coming over and checking on me and I'm working away furiously trying to get Annie back together. They eventually stopped checking on me and I assume at this point that I have been called out essentially. I've basically been struck from the record and I have forfeited the fight because I've not been able to get over there in time. I kept working away though trying to get Annie together just thinking that a worst case scenario would go into a beetle rumble or something along those lines and then when Annie is finally finally back together I make it over to the table and say Annie is ready and they're like okay good you still have a fight we're going to put you in with black hole. Black Hole is a really, really interesting design. It is a UFO shaped robot with a spinner on the top of the robot. So you have to mount up over the actual outside shell to hit the spinner at the top. Now, I'd seen this design done like once or twice before and didn't really look at Black Hole before I went to the arena. And I really should have because the thing that I missed, the critical thing that I missed is unlike other robots of this design, and I think Lazy Susan or Crazy Susan or something the robot was called, unlike that robot, Black Hole had weapon teeth on its upward spinner. The original version, Crazy Susan or whatever it was called, didn't have those. It just spun robots around on top of itself and flung them off with centrifugal force. This had teeth. And that was a, uh, a big point of this fight, so let's take a look at that.
So that one didn't go very well either, and that is why I was talking about teeth. Because if I would realized that there were teeth on top of Black Hole, I never, ever would have ramped up over top of Black Hole. I would have sat around the bottom and I would have niggled and like nicked away at his plastic until I finally got a big enough bite to throw him around the arena. However, as I said, I didn't see those teeth before the fight, which was the biggest downfall here because when I ramped up and over, I got hit by those teeth on the underside and that threw the blade up into Annie and then it just mangled itself again. So I didn't have the best luck with things hitting Annie's weapon in this fight. And obviously there needs to be some upgrades here so that Annie uh, has a stronger weapon system and just and can survive shots like that. But as it stands, I didn't realize the teeth were there. I made the mistake of getting hit by those teeth and basically self-destructing. From there, I was kind of lucky because I was high-sided on my own weapon. The belt had come off my own weapon, not that I would have been able to spin it anyway because it was resting on top of its own weapon. And I was really lucky because I was high-centered, spinning around on one wheel without silicon, which meant that it was too, well, the wheel was too small to actually get a good bite on the ground. And he comes on and hits me, which meant that I it was free for another half second. I was able to actually drive around or crab walk with my one wheel that was kind of still working there. But then of course he comes along and hits the one wheel that's still working and rips it completely off the motor shaft. What can you do? There was not much that I could do. And from there it was time to retire Annie. It was time to just give it a rest. Nothing had really gone right for the entire event and as I said Annie was always kind of a, a an extra robot while I was there. It was just a way of having a couple of extra fights while I was in the States. I wasn't really thinking about it seriously, but it did allow me to see some of the flaws in the new upgraded version that we did in the last couple of weeks. So Annie, of course, is going to get another couple of upgrades, some pretty significant upgrades this time around, I think, because these two fights, while very short, have shown some pretty serious flaws in the design that I need to correct and I need to correct and now. <laughs> So yeah, like I said at the very start of this video, it's, it's not a long video, it's not a happy video, but it is what it is. Um, it's one of those ones where I was wondering if I was going to put this video up, but it's always good to see how things actually are and how things actually work. While Annie has failed this time around and has ended up as a box of parts once again, that's okay. That is absolutely fine. As uh, I think it's... Brian Nave of uh, Shredder Raider fame has said in the past, damage is just weakness leaving your robot. And that is true. If you can look at the damage and if you can realize how it was caused and you can fix it, you can take steps to have that damage never happen to you again. And that's what we're going to do with Annie. We are going to rebuild Annie and we are going to rebuild Annie better. There's going to have to be some weight changes because Annie is kind of getting really close to the weight limit. So I'm going to have to start looking at how I shuffle weight around in the robot to actually get this to work properly. But we're going to get there, we're going to do something better, and we are going to improve Annie at some point. Yeah, so there you go. As I said, not a great video, or not a happy video, but it is a video nonetheless. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.